Hello, Dr. Judith Rolfs here, and I want to talk to you today about a very important topic for women, and it's called Sanctifying Your Home. I don't especially like that title because I think it sounds a little bit heavy, and this is not really what I intend to convey to you, but it's making sure that your home is a place where you feel comfortable and you can express your spiritual nature as well as the beautiful physical things or the nice things in your surroundings. But your children or anybody walking in would sense there's a very sweet spirit in this place. And, and it's an awareness that they, they get and they treasure and they really, really appreciate when they come to visit you. And it's also creating reminders for yourself that it's not just the physical world that we live in, but the spiritual world that's important as well. So this really came from Deuteronomy 6, and I'm actually using chapter 22 in my book, Loving Every Minute, as a woman, as a wife, and as a mom. And Deuteronomy 6, tells us that we are to diligently teach God's word to our children. And that, of course, would include our grandchildren or neighborhood children. And I love how the Jews used to do this, or they still do. But they have a mezuzah, which is a tiny scroll containing verses, and it's usually in a ornate gold um, uh, metal a scroll that's attached to the doorpost of their home and they touch it reverently when they enter the home and it's to remind them of God's word and that you shall write his commands on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So why should you be concerned about sanctifying your home? Actually it simply means dedicating it as a place where others can experience God and where you can as well, to be mindful of him. I know when we moved from uh, one home to another, we'd always have a house dedication ceremony with our friends. Um, my husband and I, our children, sometimes a pastor would walk through the rooms of the home and stop frequently to pray and dedicate each of them to God and all that would happen in that setting. So if you haven't already asked God's blessing on your home, I strongly urge you to do that. And as a reminder, when we come in through our garage entrance, I do have a sign that is Joshua 2415. It's a small piece of art. And it says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And when our daughters and our son married, we actually purchased for them similar signs and I'm happy to say that they do use those as well. It delights me when I go there and I see that. So the music, the pictures, the books in your home, the music, the pictures, the books in your home can advertise Christ to your children and inspire your guests. I recently visited a National Gallery of Art in London, England and I was reminded again that the majority of great art has a Christian theme, and it has had for centuries. Now, not every picture in your home has to have a Christian theme, but it certainly would be wonderful if many of them do. I know I go a little overboard in that area, but I love them, and I'm going to take some pictures of some of my uh, artwork so that I can show that to you as well. My friend Kathy, when she was redecorating her living room, decided that she was going to use the theme of the vine and the branches. And so she painted a vine on one wall and has ivy wallpaper on another. And her other decorations tie in with that theme. And when anyone comments, it gives Kathy a chance to tell the story of the vine and the branches and her position of clinging to Christ. And of course, God wants us to talk about him 
in our home. And we used to keep a box of little ceramic box of Bible verses on our kitchen table. And after dinner, we would let the children take turns pulling out a verse and talking about if and how it applied to their life that day. And now we do that with our grandchildren often when they visit. It's just really a matter of having triggers around your home that remind you of God's love and presence in your home and in your mind and your heart and, and your children's. I don't mean just cultural trappings of Christianity, but things that really mean something to you. And also, of course, in your conversation in the home, you want to make sure that it is uplifting to God. I think it's uh, wonderful to stop at times and to objectively evaluate what's in your home and think about what other meaningful symbols you might add or what meaningful actions as a family that you could use. I love setting a wonderful, holy atmosphere for myself as well as for my children so they know how important God is to me. So I hope those thoughts will inspire some of your own ways that you can incorporate sanctifying your home and that you will be blessed as you're more immersed in an awareness of God's presence and as your children are. When I first started uh, thinking about this, I actually had a dream and I envisioned like a half wheel over each of my children's beds as a bed board and that I had printed on their scripture verses that were meaningful to them and to their name. And I kind of tried to depict that in art once for them. But that actually came as I dreamt about what would be a wonderful way for my children to know that they were being nurtured in a loving Christian environment. So let's end with a prayer. Dear Lord, be present in our home, filling it with your love and wisdom. Help me to decorate our home with pictures and ornaments that daily increase my awareness of you. And may I never forget that our home is dedicated to you. Thank you so much for listening. And you can find these ideas in Loving Every Minute. And if you found this information helpful, it would be delightful if you would like my YouTube presentation and subscribe to my channel, which is all kinds of tips for living a fantastic, fulfilling, joyful family life. Have an awesome day.